Hello again and welcome back to another one of our Christmas tutorials. Now today I'm looking at creating an all-round design in this beautiful sort of bulb shaped container. It's a coppery gold colour and I've chosen um, an apricot colour combination. It's quite similar to the design that we created with that lovely wreath ring at the back. Um, golds, apricots or shades, quite popular at Christmas time. Now I'm also going to introduce an artificial candle this time. This is one of those battery operated ones that you can buy in most high street stores. This is a much more safer option if you're using um, lots of different foliages and of course you can leave it unattended. Sometimes when we're creating designs here for hotels or reception areas, we are quite often asked to use an artificial candle. Um, so that it doesn't become a fire, a fire hazard and a fire risk for the business. So we've looked at the container and we'll move that to one side for just a second and we'll look at the foliage and the flowers that I'm going to use today. Now I've got this beautiful Oleria and this is often referred to as a false holly or a New Zealand holly. Um, it's got that prickled edge just like the proper holly but it, it's not as spiky and it's not as offensive as the real green holly and that one's going to give me a beautiful colour combination alongside my flowers. I've also introduced some hemlock. Now this is um, perfectly usable in floral designs. There are some poisonous hemlock but it's not this variety. Um, I've also got grevillea which we haven't used before. It's lovely long foliage with a lighter underside and a darker colour on the top so that's going to work really well with my colour combination and if I show you this piece you can clearly see the colour difference with this light on the back and a darker green there on the front side so you can use this showing whichever colour you prefer the darker or the lighter side. Now I also have um, some little bits of very delicate soft ivy and I'm going to hopefully drape that over the container. It's quite stiff so it might need a little bit of manipulation to help me drape it over the side but a really delicate little leaf. I've also got some traditional holly. Uh, no I haven't got holly, I've got ivy, some traditional ivy and this is the common ivy and again it's got lovely movement so that's going to cascade really nicely down over the side of my metallic container. And I've got a little bit of conifer. So I've gone for those seasonal evergreens, things that you often see used in Christmas designs. And um, some, is, some of it's commercially available, some of it is materials that you might have in the garden. But anything that you might have at the moment that's evergreen, that's not losing its leaf, is going to work really well in this design. Now I've got um, a beautiful textured material. This is called pepperberry. And this one has been dyed. It's almost a sort of rose gold colour. Um, let me just get a few pieces out for you to see. So this comes in ready dyed and we can get it in lots of different colours. Um, and this again is going to drape really well over the container. I did go for a gold or a bronze because I wanted a bit of contrasting colour. I just get that container. So I didn't want to have exactly the same colour. I wanted to have something that picked up on the lighter shades of my container and uh, would give me an interest in colour and shape. Now we've used the Hypnose Rose before, so that's that lovely one we used in the design a few weeks ago, and the colourings alongside that pepperberry is just really quite wonderful. I'm loving that, that combination. You've seen the blooms before because we've used these in a few different designs as well. That's an apricot sort of shade, very pretty, works so well together. Now we've seen the Ilex Berry as well, that's the lovely long foliage without the foliage on, so that's the leafless Ilex Berry. Um, I'm possibly going to introduce some of the red rose hips that we looked at before as well. So we used this in one of the designs, uh, probably the previous video from today. I just felt it might need a little bit of extra brightness and some extra colour, but there's a possibility I won't use those. Now you've just seen me lift out this wonderful coral fern and I used the rose gold spray 
So I sprayed that myself, just a very light duster, not too heavy, so that it picks up on the colour of those little pepper berries. And again, again, beautiful texture, almost skeleton in its formation, not too heavy, but very dramatic when placed into an arrangement. And then something that we haven't used before, this is the seed head from the Clematis. This is amazing Kibo. Uh, if you grow Clematis here in the UK, then you might have something like this very similar in the garden, often referred to as old man's beards, but we're lucky enough to be able to buy this commercially. Um, again, I picked it because of the texture, beautiful colour combination, those pale apricots and creams, which are going to work really well with my sort of bronzy container. So I think that's all my materials. I'll talk a little bit more about them as we go through the design and give you some hints and tips on how to care for them and look after them. Um, but I think now it's time to start the design, so pop back in a minute. Now this fabulous container that I'm going to use today is quite large and it's going to take up a, a huge amount of floral foam to fill that. Now we could, if we wanted to, fill the bottom section with some old floral foam or maybe some sand, but I found that I've got in the studio here this smaller container which happens to fit quite comfortably in the top of the design. And then it means that I don't have to use quite as much floral foam to fill this very large container. So let's just move that out the way for one second. Now I've pre-soaked a block of floral foam just here. And I'm going to place this, this time I'm going to place it almost flat to my container. And that's because I want quite a natural design. I don't want anything that's too formal. Um, it's going to be an all-round shape. So let's just put this up on its side and, and give us an idea of the measurement. So I think that's going to be ample for my container. And I'm going to sit that in the centre. And then what I'm going to do is get some extra foam now to pack down the side so that I've got ample room to put my flowers in. Remembering that I have this quite large candle to sit on the top. So I need to make sure that I've still got floral foam around the outside to place my flowers into. Now with the size of that foam there in the middle, you can see that I'm quite limited to how many stems I can insert, in, insert into that foam. So I need to uh, make that much bigger than it is at the moment. Now after a little bit of tweaking, what I decided to do was to lay the floral foam flat in the bottom of the container. I decided that it was probably going to be a lot more stable once I attached the candle on the top. So I now have prepared another piece of foam, the same size, and I'm going to sit that on top there. And then what I'm going to do with the smaller off cuts that we had left from one of the previous videos, I'm going to cut those to size and then just insert those down on the side there on either side to make sure that it doesn't move around and slide about. And that's going to give me a much more secure mechanic than my original plan. So you know sometimes we have to adapt and change um, what we had in our minds. I'm just going to get rid of this for one second and wipe down because we've got quite a lot of water on the table. Okay, so we're nice and clean now and we can start working again. So I bring back that large bowl and I can place that in the top section there and now I've got a really good and secure mechanics and my candle is going to sit quite comfortably there in the center might have to push it down just slightly to get it nice and straight I think that's going to work quite well now then what we're going to start with next is to create a little bit of an outline with all this lovely foliage that we've got I'm going to start first of all with these few pieces of holly. Oh, I keep calling it holly, it's not holly. I'm going to use these pieces of the very common ivy that we have here in the UK. And I'm going to drape them beautifully over the side of the container. Spinning that base around as I work to try and get them fairly evenly spaced out. And I've got three pieces, so I've tried to equally disperse them. So the gap in between them is fairly similar. Um, you know, it's quite a traditional design. It's not the end of the world if we don't have them equally spaced apart. All right, okay, so we'll use, I think we're gonna go with the Grevillea next. 
um, this has again a little bit of a natural shape to it so it's arching down to the bottom of the table and that will give me a really good strong outline and again I've sort of started working in a pattern of three with the original pieces of um, ivy so I'm going to build up that similar sort of pattern so now we can introduce three sections of the grevillea this one on the back is a bit thin so we'll fill that out and at the moment I'm just trying to create a little bit of an outline shape using a variety of different textured foliage and you can see that I'm angling everything down over the sides of the container and towards the bottom of my table what we're not doing is angling in this direction up towards the air this gives it a much softer edge it hides that very um, obvious white ring of my container underneath and it gives me a seamless join between my container and the floral foam on the top now i think my candle is not sitting quite as straight as i would like it to be so we'll just push that down the difficulty with working with a all round design is what whichever way you face it you get to see a different uh, the candle from a different position and it never seems to be quite as straight as you would like it to be now i'm going to introduce some of the rose gold to the outside edge and i'm going to thin this out beautiful beautiful texture so gorgeous and I'm going to place this on top of the foliage that we've already placed in. I know at the moment I've still got quite a few gaps. Um, but I'm going to introduce this lovely rose gold so that we've got a contrast behind it. We've got a little bit of darker green behind it so that it elevates the colour a bit. If we put it in just on its own against the container, it's almost going to be lost alongside the copper base. So we'll add a few bits of this in as we go around. I, do, I don't need a great deal at the moment. And next I'm going to introduce the Oliria, that lovely false holly, or the New Zealand holly. And again, work your way round the outside. Now I've managed to get two or three pieces out of the Oliria. So we're continuing to strengthen that outline shape. And at the moment you'll see that I've only gone round the outside. I haven't brought any foliage yet up into the top. I'm making sure that I've got a strong outline, a circular all round shape in place before I move towards the top. Um, and the reason that I'm doing that is because if you start in this section here and you start at the top, it's then quite hard to tuck all your materials underneath and create your outline shape so for me it's always better to start low down on your foam and get yourself a really good shape before you start now even though i'm working in almost a pattern of three i've got my design equally set into three sections um i'm not trying to make it perfect so each section so if you can imagine that as being a slice of cake three slices of cake out of my circular design. I don't want each section to be perfect because flower arranging, um, you know, flowers and foliage growing in nature don't grow in definite patterns. So we're trying to make this quite natural and quite informal. Right, so fairly good outline shape there. Lots of different textures, different color combinations. We've got spiky material against something smooth and flat so i'm really thinking about the contrast of my material next to one another um, i've got some of that conifer so this will be my last foliage around the outside um, and again it's draping wonderfully it's quite heavy so it's going to cascade over the side really nicely and give me that quite natural look if we use very flat material that's quite straight and very rigid, you get quite an artificial edge to your design. We'll add a little bit more of this texture all the way around before we start working our way to the top. 
gorgeous. Now, I'm, if you're learning this type of design, if this is the first time you've done an all round shape, it can sometimes be a bit difficult to make it the same length all the way round. So a good little tip would be to lay your materials down on the floor or on the table before you start and cut them to a fairly similar shape. And then you'll know that when you finish the design, because they started off at the same length, you're going to hopefully get a really good circular design. So if you've cut them to the same size before you start, you're almost guaranteed to have a really good circular outline shape when you finish. Um, another good tip is to every now and again put it down on the floor and have a look at it from a further distance away because you can more clearly see the areas that need filling in or the sections that don't have a particular colour or a particular textured foliage. But for now, I think we've done a fairly good job there creating an outline shape. So let's just remove the candle. I'll tip that forward. Hopefully it'll all stay in place and hopefully you can see that it's a really good circular design. Okay, so we'll get that candle back there on the top. And again, if we haven't quite got that candle straight at the end, I can always just chamfer off a little bit of the floral foam to make it stand uh, more straight there. But I, I think we're doing okay. Right, so now let's bring some foliage up towards that candle. And just like the traditional designs that we've done in the past, this design will radiate out from the centre point. So all of the foliage that goes in the top section looks like it's coming from the centre point. And the centre point is just below where this candle is here. Aim all your stems in towards the centre. Okay, now you're going to do this on a couple of different levels. So we're going up close to the candle, then in the middle, so that we have a continuation of foliage all from top to bottom and if you think about this as being your outline down to the edge of your design everything stays within this section here what we're not going to do is put a really long piece of foliage in because that is going to be lost in our original outline so hopefully that makes a bit of sense Right, I'm going to work my way through with the different types of foliage. Got a lovely textured conifer, and um, if I just show you that piece there, that has a little section of the baby cone starting to form on there, so lovely colours. Then we're going to use the hemlock again, because again, we've already used it on the bottom, so we need to bring it through to the top as well. And... I'm cutting them into fairly short pieces, but varying them in length. You know, have ones that are slightly longer, a few that are a bit shorter, and then we have a nice natural shape to our arrangement. Let me just grab the coral fern from in front of me. Okay, so some slightly shorter pieces of the coral fern towards the top as well. Now often the coral fern, we quite often use this in wedding bouquets, it gives a nice soft outline and because it's been sprayed with the uh, rose gold spray, you'll probably find that this will almost become preserved and it will last quite a long period of time and as long as you look after it, you'll probably be able to use it again in a couple of months time in a, another type of design. Okay, now I've got the last two pieces of foliage to go in and this one again is that lovely um, holly. Now you can see on the top of that, uh, because I've had it out of water for maybe half an hour or so while I've been prepping the design, it has gone a little bit floppy on the top. But if it's back in the floral foam and it's back in the water source, it will soon pick back up again. So don't, don't panic too much about that. Remember that all the woody stemmed foliage needs to be conditioned really well. So you need to put it in water for a good 24 hours before you use it. Whether you're buying it from the florist shop or you're picking it from your own garden, you need to condition it by putting it in water overnight, cutting the stem at a horizontal 
the stem horizontally so it takes up more water. You can also split the stem vertically up through the middle. Um, but it's important not to cut the foliage from your garden and use it straight into your design. Right, on to that last little piece of grevillea to bring that same colour and texture through. Now if you're a lover of foliage like me, I could quite happily just carry on this design with more foliage and not put any flowers in at all, especially for a Christmas table arrangement. Um, it looks really festive for this time of the year. Now you could of course add some holly and um, mistletoe if you can get hold of it. Anything that you might have evergreen in the garden is really good for a Christmas table design. And with foliage you'll probably find that um, we're sort of the third week of November now, but you'll probably find that a lot of this foliage, if it's kept in the floral foam and the floral foam is kept moist, this will probably last quite uh, probably up until Christmas Day for you. So you could prep this in advance and add or change the flowers as we go into the festive season and we go closer to Christmas. So hopefully that's coming together quite nicely. A really good outline shape. Circular, all the different types of foliages evenly distributed throughout the design. Okay, so I've kept some spare foliage just in case we need to fill in at the end, but what I'm going to start by doing now is adding my flowers into the arrangement. And I'm going to start with the larger of my chrysanthemum blooms. This would really now act as the focal flower, so we need to look, about, look at getting these in fairly evenly distributed. And I've got three of them. And I often choose threes because I think it makes the design circular. If you use four, you've probably heard me say it before in the Back to Basics series where we first learned how to do a posy arrangement. And this is just an extension of that posy arrangement using more flowers and more foliages. But if you use fours, you tend just to split the design into four sections, which Four tends to be um, um, visually, it gives the effect of a square, it's a bit like a box. So again, just like I did with my foliage in the beginning, I'm trying to equally space out my larger focal flowers so that I've got um, the colour evenly distributed throughout the design. And hopefully the gap between each one is fairly similar. Now if you only have small flowers, so if you're only using something like the small rose and maybe the little filler clematis, that's not quite as important to do. But because this is such a large flower, it's very dominant and it's very visual. If we don't equally spread them out, the balance of the design, the visual balance becomes very much uneven. And you have this colour and this shape and texture very dominant on one side of the design. When you're using lots of smaller flowers, you're going to um, eat more easily spread out and equally disperse the colours. Right, so now we're going to go in with the roses. So initially I'm going to start with three roses and I'm going to place them in between that main focal flower. And because this is the more dominant part of the arrangement, I'm going to use the more open roses. You might not have an option, you know, if you're buying supermarket roses, sometimes they're very similar in shape and size. Uh, but for me, I'm lucky enough to have three that are a little bit more open. So these now become my secondary sort of focal point. They're the smaller flower, but not quite as important as these very big dominant blooms but they are the larger flowers to come into the design. Now to bring that colour down to the outside edge, because if we imagine now we have this big band of foliage around here which doesn't have any flowers in, I'm going to bring another section of the roses down towards the bottom. Now if you can only get hold of one type of flower, just think about evenly spreading it out. Spreading it out. So that you have that colour dispersed in all sections of the arrangement. So this time these ones are angled far more closer to the foliage edge 
and on a different level to the original placement of flowers. Okay, let's just get rid, rid of some of my rubbish here into the bin. And I've got one more rose there for the outside edge. Now, I often remove a lot of the foliage on the roses. Um, you can, I'm not sure if you can pick out on that one. There's a little label stuck on that rose, and that, that's the picker. That's whoever at the farm has picked the rose. It's their identification in case there's a problem. Um, this rose is Hypnos. We've used this before. And I've removed, um, in this case, I've removed nearly all of the foliage because here in the UK, we often have heating on at home. And for me, the rose leaf crisps up quite quickly and deteriorates a lot faster than the rose head. Um, also, by removing some of the foliage, it means that the water is going directly to the head to keep the rose head alive rather than trying to keep the leaves of the rose alive. So for me, I quite often remove them all. Don't, no, I think it's probably um, a personal taste as well. I, I, some people like to leave the roses on, sorry, the rose leaves on. Um, I think if I'm doing a bouquet of roses, then I leave quite a lot of the foliage on because I really feel it looks quite unnatural if you're delivering a gorgeous bouquet of 12 roses with lots of foliage and a beautiful filler flower and then the poor rose doesn't have any foliage on it at all. So for me, if they're in a vase with an ample water source, sometimes it's good to leave that rose leaf on, but in an arrangement like this, I've removed it because it does look quite tatty and quite scruffy quite quickly. Okay, so nice even distribution. We've got the color of the rose on the top and the bottom. Now I'm going to introduce the Ilex Berry and you hear me talk about different shapes and contrasting shapes and textures and this is exactly now what this Ilex Berry is going to do. It's going to introduce a completely different shape, a different colour and different texture but it's all peaches, apricot shades, it's all come from the same sort of colour combination and for me the, that spike effect of the Ilex Berry works much better on the outside of the design. It makes your eye follow right the way through to the end of the arrangement. When we introduce it towards the top section, I'm going to cut it down into smaller pieces so that it's not quite so dominant towards the top. Okay, so let's work our way round. Again, I'm still pretty much working in a pattern in a group of three. Okay, so now I've just got two of the Ilex berries left. So what I'm going to do now is introduce the colour through to the top. And rather than putting this whole piece in, I'm going to break it down into a few smaller sections so that I can introduce this colour in through to the top. Now the Ilex berry is probably um, something that you would find in a florist shop. Sometimes the more high-end supermarkets will have the Ilex Berry towards Christmas. But if you want to order some of this for your own designs, then just choose a good florist and they'll purchase them for you. Okay, so again, we've tried to get that colour all the way through. The linear shape of the Ilex makes your eye travel up and down, so it moves to the outer edge of the design. And my next one is going to be the really interesting Clematis. This one, the variety for this is Amazing Kobe. And you could probably dry that quite nicely as well. And exactly the same method again. I'm going to start angling them downwards towards the outside of the arrangement. And then I'll bring some towards the top and to meet the candle at the top also a brilliant colour link between the creams of the candle and you'll find with the clematis I'm cutting it into two sections so we get more value for money it's a more economical way of using up your materials I think I've probably got five pieces in total so we've used two 
just keep spinning it around until you feel there's an area that needs this colour and texture. Now I've gone all the way around the outside, so now I'm going to start bringing it towards the top section. Real lovely material to use. This is wonderful in wedding bouquets. If somebody's looking for that just picked meadow sort of style, it um, brings in some lightness. Okay, just a few, two little small bits to pop in there. And I'm quite happy with the placements of those. Again, we'll just remove the candle and tip that forward so you can see how it's coming together. Now I'm not too worried about my candle um, being attached with any types of prongs or wires. Um, it's deep enough in the flowers to be quite secure. But again, if this was a real candle with a naked flame, I would need to make sure that it was attached quite firmly to my foam. Right, now, here's the point where I can't quite decide whether to introduce the red berry. I think for me, I'm not going to bother. Um, I'm going to leave it the apricot shades. And now I can use this really pretty pepper berry. Now this is a dried material, so we buy it in already dried. So this lasts for ages. Looks wonderful in door wreaths as well, if you can buy this from your local florist shop. Um, it's natural colour is a sort of burgundy pink. Um, but it's really pretty at this time of the year. And I'm going to drape some of it over the container. Isn't that pretty? So again, we're choosing to repeat that very small circular shape. So we're repeating almost the same shape as the Ilex berry. But we're introducing a contrasting colour. It's slightly longer and has more movement in it. It's not as severe and as straight as the Ilex berry. So this works much better for coming over the side of your arrangement. And I'm just going to keep working my way around the outside edge before bringing it up towards the centre point and towards my candle. So what do we think of that one? Is that something you'd be able to do at home? So I hope you've enjoyed this one. I think this might be fourth in the series of our Christmas videos. So don't forget, if you've really been enjoying these tutorial videos, please subscribe to the channel or hit the bell to be notified every time I upload another video. Don't forget that in the comment box below, I will list all the flower materials that have been used. And if you've got any questions, please put them in the comment box below. Let me know what part of the world you're from, because it's fascinating to find out the different areas that you're watching me from. And let me know what you think. Bye for now. See you very soon.